Hello, my name's Heather. I have cancer and you're very welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, I have been using YouTube as a methodology of communicating with my friends and family so that I knew a kind of a one one time deal and saved me the saved me the hassle of not getting getting in touch with everybody I need to get in touch with in, on the days that I'm feeling well because I don't feel well many many days. So um, also to catch up, I went to my halfway mark imaging with my surgeon. So I'm halfway through my neoadjuvant chemo. I still have, I won't be finished until Easter and today is January 29th to 2021. So it'll be April, um, the end of March before I'm finished. But in the meantime, we looked at the tumor in, um, it's, breast, it's breast cancer for those of you that are new here. And it's so small now that we actually had a hard time finding it. Like I can't feel it. He couldn't feel it. And the ultrasound, we had to blow it up three times before we could get any image at all. And he said, it's really, really tiny. So it's working. And we looked at the, um, Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. What are the, the, the lymph nodes? And they looked abnormal, he said, but he said that that could be um, like scar tissue. So hopefully that's what that is. But it's very, very encouraging that the tumor has shrunk so much that I can hardly even see it. And I go through my next round of chemo is next Thursday. So six days from now. And I'm assuming that by the next time I talk to you, it'll be gone, gone, gone. So that is good news. What that would mean normally was is that in after Easter, when I get my surgery to remove the tumor, there's a very high degree of likelihood that they won't be able to find anything. Now they inject you with dyes and stuff to try and find it. And, and they'll be removing lymph nodes too, if they can find any, but it's not unusual with HER2 positive um, cancer using the new drugs that they have available uh, Herceptin and Pregida for this to happen. It doesn't happen with everyone, but it, it is known to be, it's a thing, and that was the best case scenario that we were hoping for. However, I also got some bad news. The bad news is my DNA test came back. It's genetic. It's genetic. Uh, Will said, well, the good news there, air, that looks funky, but the good news there it, Will says, it's like, well, that means you didn't do anything wrong, which, you know, I, you know, we live in a VOC free home since 2006 and there's no phthalates or parabens or pesticides or anything from Monsanto in my life. No, no soy at all. Um, although to be fair, over the years, it is getting a lot harder to be BPA free. I don't know if the rest of you have had that experience, but it's getting ridiculous. I think it's hard to find vegetables even organic vegetables that aren't in play. Anyway, I digress. Point of the story is that it is genetic. I ha I meet with a genetics counselor on the phone, on the phone um, Monday, and it looks like the company that tested my DNA will be giving free DNA tests to my immediate family. Uh, I'm not 100% sure who that includes. I think my brother, my sister, and both my parents and we'll find out which side of the family this comes from. This is this is very, very scary news because I have nieces and nephews and siblings and I guess I'm just the oldest and boy, do I hate being the canary in the coal mine, but somebody has to do it and I don't have any kids. So maybe it's good news that it was me. So anyway, so the bad news is that my, and I've called my aunts on either side of the family to let them know that this is coming down the pipeline and when we get results back for mom and dad, then I might be letting them know. One of the problems that we're having is mom is late stage Alzheimer's. So I don't know how successful we'll be at getting her to spit and do a test tube. No, because they want a fair amount. It's like, mom, you gotta spit some more. So I don't know how that's gonna play out. And if dad tests positive, that doesn't mean that mom tested positive. But if dad tests negative, then we know for sure that, that mom was positive. But anyway, so my aunts are on high alert. I have not contacted cousins or anything. And, and I'll know how serious that is Monday after I talk to the genetics counselor. And I think it's so weird that the genetics 
um, testing company and wants to do everyone for free? Really? Really? What do you want our DNA for? It's kind of like the only thing we have, I guess we don't even have privacy when it comes to DNA anymore. The only thing I can think of is that it's more valuable to have that information for genome testing going forward than it, than they would make off of, what is that, $250? get the test. I don't know. So anyway, so it's free. I don't know how many they'll do for free, but at least some of them are for free. Anyway, so in addition to my whole entire family being on DEF CON 5 high alert with this, you know, potentially bad news coming down the pipeline for them as well, it also means that no matter how successful my chemo treatments are, I need now need preventative double mastectomy. Yeah, so they don't recommend double mastectomies for um, women recovering from, well, men or women recovering from breast cancer, because most likely it doesn't come back in the breast. It comes back in the bones, usually, first and foremost, and then, and then I think liver, brain, and then lungs. So, so there's no, there's no correlation between a double mastectomy post breast cancer and staving off the return but I'm already genetically predisposed to breast cancer, so they're worried that I'll get a completely different one in addition to this one. So we're doing preventative double mastectomy. So I've got that major. So, oh, and I can't have it until I'm healthy enough to have it. So now we're in this situation where after my last round of chemo, I have to have another scan, which I knew that was going to happen and look um, at the lungs to see once and for all if those nodes were breast cancer nodes in the lungs. There was always this possibility that it was scar tissue from, from pneumonia or something. I've never had pneumonia, but I've had bronchitis a lot. Maybe it, I was kind of hoping it was that. But so anyway, so we'll find out if it's stage four cancer and that it was in the lungs and that the nodes in my lungs have shrunk along with the nodes my breasts and, and the lymph nodes, um, then I will not be healthy enough to have a double mastectomy uh, because I'll be in a long-term cancer fight if it's stage four as they think it is. If we get lucky and it's stage two and those nodes are still there because they're actually, well, see, the thing is they're too small to biopsy. So we're, one, there's a possibility that I'm only stage two, which would have been really great news if I were stage two. But now if I'm stage two, I need a double vest to me. Oh my God. So I've already decided I'm having um, an aesthetic flat closure and not getting reconstruction. I'm 50, I'll be 53 when all this happens. So I'm definitely not doing that. All right. So that is all the news that spits to print. And um, I hope you all are well and healthy and staying warm. It's really cold here today and it snowed yesterday. And I'm, so that, that's news. I'm doing okay. I'm halfway through. It's, the, the chemo seems to be working, but whether or not I'm officially stage four or stage two means that, well, I'm hoping I'm stage two. I'd rather have a double mastectomy than dealing with stage four cancer. So yay, let's hope for a double mastectomy, everybody. <laughs> I'm I'm in a good mood. Okay. I will talk to you all later. I love you so much. Thank you so much for all of the little, I mean, even if you just send me a like or just a little note on messenger, it's just like, you know, I'm on double, triple lockdown because I have no immune system and any human contact means a lot to me. I hope you all stay well. Talk to you later. Bye.